Are you ready for another memory analysis exercise? In today's video, I'll be going over a lab provided by Blue Team Labs online called Memory Analysis Ransomware. And in this lab, we'll be analyzing a memory dump from an endpoint belonging to an account executive, where they stated that their files have been encrypted. But before I do begin, if you enjoy these lab walkthroughs, I would highly encourage you to take a look at the hands-on lab playlist that I will be linking down below for you to get more practice. With that being said, let's get started. To get started with this, you want to head over to blueteamlabs.online and create an account if you haven't done so already. Once you've logged in, go ahead and click on challenges located at the top. And then over to the search bar, you want to search for ransomware. The one that we're interested in is the memory analysis ransomware. Click on start challenge. And before we get started, let's take a look at the scenario. It says, the account executive called the SOC earlier and sounds very frustrated and angry. He stated that he can't access any files on his computer and it keeps receiving a pop-up stating that his files have been encrypted. You disconnected the computer from the network and extracted the memory dump of his machine and started analyzing it with volatility. Continue your investigation to uncover how the ransomware works and how to stop it. This particular scenario gives us a hint on what tool we should be using. And it's also listed right here. Volatility. Now, if you don't know how to get started with volatility, I do have a video that I created to help you get started and I'll list that down below. Let's go ahead and download our file and I'll save this into our desktop and do take note of the password, which is btlo all lowercase. Once the download is completed, go ahead and open it and I'll go over to 7-zip and extract here. Type in btlo all lowercase. And if all is well, we should get a new directory called btlo memory analysis ransomware. And this is our memory of interest. It is called infected.vmem. Now that we have our memory file, let's get started with the analysis. Although I am currently on a Windows operating system, I do have Windows subsystem for Linux installed. And what that allows me to do is run Linux on my Windows machine. I'll go ahead and open up a Linux shell here by holding shift, right click, and open Linux shell here. If you don't have Windows subsystem for Linux, that is okay. You can do this lab on your own Ubuntu machine. If I type in ls, I should see my infected.vmem file right here. Perfect. Clear out the screen. To run volatility, all I need to do is type in vol and hit enter. Now this will give me all of the options that are available for volatility. The current version that I'm using is volatility 3, 2.8.0. Now I know it is quite difficult to see, so let me go ahead and zoom in just a bit. Now that we know that volatility works, let's take a look at question number one. And question number one actually gives us a parameter to run. So vol.py-f in our infected.vmem, it's asking us to use the profile of Windows 7 SP1x86 with a PS scan. And it says that will list all processes. What is the name of the suspicious process? So what I'll do here is highlight the dash dash profile, including the profile value. Copy that. And now I'll type in vol dash F infected and let's paste that in. And what they wanted us to run was the plugin of PS scan. Now, because we are working with volatility three, we do need to put in windows dot PS scan in the front before the PS scan, because if we run it with just PS scan, it won't work. And again, it tells us all of the plugins that are currently available within volatility three. And if we take a look right here, it has our windows dot PS scan dot PS scan. Now we don't need to say windows.psscan.psscan. <laughs> All we need to do is type in windows.psscan and that should be okay. And we get another error saying unrecognized arguments. So the dash dash profile equals this particular profile. With volatility three, as far as I know, we don't need to put in a profile anymore. With volatility two, you do need to put in a profile. So let's go ahead and just remove this and hit enter. Now volatility three goes out and does its thing. And just a couple seconds, it is completed. The question was asking for a suspicious process. How do we find what is suspicious within a memory dump or within a process listing? 
One of the telltale signs is the process name itself. However, a lot of malware nowadays like to hide in plain sight. They don't like to name their malware super obvious. <laughs> For example, we do see a at wanna decryptor. This right here stands out to me because that is not really a common name. Nor is this or4qtckt.exe. And as I just mentioned, a lot of malware nowadays like to hide in plain sight. So they would likely name their malware along the lines of servicehost.exe or even dllhost.exe, maybe change the L to a one or maybe even a capital I. But just looking at the at wanna decryptor, I think this is likely our answer. But let's scroll up and see what other processes are available. Taking a look and that's about it. Another plugin that I like to use to complement the data that I found using PSCAN is called CMD line. And this will essentially run all of the processes showing the command line. And what I'm going to be looking for is the wanna decryptor and the other suspicious weird looking executable. And here we go. We see at wanna decryptor and the process is at wanna decryptor at dot exe. So there's a hidden at here. Hmm. Okay. Do we see that other weird one? And oh, we're right here. So look at this. C users hacker desktop. So we know that there is a user called hacker. And this doesn't look safe. <laughs> we do see Tor with a backslash of task h service.exe. This could be an interesting process as well. Based on this output here, we've observed multiple suspicious processes. So which one is the answer for question number one? Let's run another plugin and this time I'll run what is called PS tree. So I wanna see what is the first quote unquote suspicious process that was executed. And whichever one was first is likely the suspicious process that BTLO is looking for. Now I know this is very difficult to see. So what I'll do here is just quickly output it to pstree.txt. Once that's done, let's go ahead and open it up. And right now the text is currently wrapped. Let's uncheck that by clicking on format and uncheck word wrap. Now it's a lot cleaner. With the process tree, on the very left hand side, you will notice that there is an asterisk and one asterisk essentially means the parent process. If you see two asterisks, that is the child process of the one asterisk, AKA the parent process. For example, if we take a look at this one right here, it has one asterisk with a process identifier of 496. If we look at the one right below it, we have two asterisks, and this is the child process of 496. With that being said, let's scroll down and let's find our wanna decryptor. And that is this right here. So we do see the wanna decryptor as a child process of this suspicious process, which is the or4qtckt.exe. And this occurred at 2021, January 31st at 1802.16 UTC time. Now I did see two wanna decryptors when I ran PS scan. And you know what? Let's do that again and output it to a file. Just type that in as PS scan and let's use the plugin PS scan. Now that that's done, let's open up our text and scrolling down, we have a wanna decryptor that ran at 1824.49. Okay, so that is about 22 minutes after the execution of our OR4QT EXE. All right. So the suspicious process could be this. Let's try that out. Copy. If I look at the format, it's saying at process name. So that tells me that this is likely the incorrect answer. Yeah, the one that has the at is the wanna decryptor. So I'll copy this just in case. Let's try it out. Yeah, wrong answer, okay. Let's paste in our wanna decryptor and hit submit. There you go. What is the parent process ID for the suspicious process? That we know is our weird executable. We take a look at the process tree. 
the parent process ID, which is this number right here, 2732, is our OR4.exe process identifier. So that is our answer to question number two. What is the initial malicious executable that created this process? That is our OR4. Copy that and paste that in here. If you drill down on the suspicious PID, find the process used to delete files. Huh? If you drill down on the suspicious PID, so suspicious process, so if I drill down on this process identifier using grep, find a process used to delete files. Okay, let me clear up the screen because it's getting a little messy. Hit up a couple times here. They wanted me to use process scan and then grep the, I'm assuming the suspicious process identifier, which in other words is 3968. So if I were to grep that, what will I find here? I still see the at wanna decryptor, unless they meant this process identifier, 2732. Let's try that, 2732. Oh, okay, we get a couple more. We have taskdl.exe, taskdl.exe. Is that found anywhere else? Under PS scan, let me try and search for it. Taskdl.exe. That we cannot find. Oh, that is because I'm searching the down direction. Let's try up. Oh, here we go. So there's one here. And that is with a process identifier of 4060. Oh, of course I can find it because I'm using PS scan. Okay. <laughs> that was a whoopsies by me. What I meant to do was can I find it under the PS tree? Let's try taskdl.exe, click on up, and no, we do not find that. Okay, so that means it's no longer an active process. I wonder if we could still dump that process, even if it exited using volatility. Let's try that out. Let's take a look at the available plugins for Windows. Is there anything that says process dump? So I don't see anything with process dump, we do see a dump files, but that is different. Instead, let's try windows.ps scan. And if we add on a dash H, does that say anything? Aha, we have a dash dash dump flag. Extract the listed processes. Let's go ahead and run that. And we know the process ID for the one that we're interested in is 40 six zero hit enter and unrecognized arguments okay let's try adding a dash h and no so you know what let's actually let's be a bit more specific i'll put in dash dash pid 4060 hit enter that should show us the process of interest and we do see it perfect so now let's add in dash dash dump in theory it should dump only that particular process Awesome, so that worked, but we got an error outputting file and that makes sense because this particular process is no longer active within that memory. In other words, it exited, so it's not active. And that's okay. What I wanted to do was extract the file, get the hash, look it up on VirusTotal and see if vendors had flagged this particular file. And if they did, what was the behavior for this file? Did it delete files? If it did, then this process is likely our answer. But because we can't dump this particular file, what we can do instead is try dumping the OR4 executable. So use the same method, but extract a different process. I'll change my PID to 2732, and I'll go ahead and dump this. And that is success. There was no errors. If I were to type in LS, I could see our dumped process right here. I'm going to run a SHA-256 sum, point it over to my file of interest, hit tab for auto completion and enter. Now I'll double click my file hash, right click to copy, and let's head over to VirusTotal. Click on search, paste in my hash, hit enter, and wow, 48 vendors flagged this as malicious as a recording. And if I take a look at some of the signatures here, it's telling me it's ransom and wanna cry, ooh. 
interesting. Click on details. This was created back in 2010 at November 20, 0905 UTC. Go over to community. Let's see here. Ooh, WannaCry ransomware. So if I were to search up WannaCry, now that we have a hint as to what this particular strain is, and scrolling down, let's take a look at the report from CISA. WannaCry is ransomware that contains a worm component. It attempts to exploit vulnerabilities in the Windows SMB version 1 server to remotely compromise systems, encrypt files, and spread to other hosts. That sounds like a fun time. Do we have any IOCs, aka indicators of compromise? And we do not. What if I search up WannaCry IOC? We do have a WannaCry malware profile by Mandian. I click on that. Uh, let's see here. So we have some of the file characteristics we have. Oh, look at that. At wanna decryptor at .exe. So this was what we saw in our memory. Persistence mechanism. We see some task here. Is there that file? Task dl.exe. Yes, there is. Description, support tool for removing temporary files. There you go. <laughs> we stumbled upon our answer. So this particular process is our answer for the next question. Copy that, head over to BTLO, and that is task dl.exe. Find the path where the malicious file was first executed. That we did come across when I ran the command line plugin. Clear out the screen, hit up a couple times, and instead of PS scan, I'll run the CMD line. And if we look for our process of interest, which is this one right here, we can see that it ran from the C users hacker desktop. Let me just copy that. And that should be the answer. Nice. The next question, can you identify what ransomware it is? Do your research. That we already did. We know it is WannaCry. What is the file name for the file with the ransomware public key that was used to encrypt the private key? .eky extension. Well, if we go back over to our Google research here, we might be able to find something of interest. Encryptor.eky, perhaps it is this one. Go ahead and copy that out. I'm just taking a look at some of the analysis that was done. This is pretty interesting. WannaCry holds a very special place in my heart because I was actually on vacation in Japan when this occurred. I recall seeing the entire sock freaking out because a bunch of clients were hit by this. And I was, I guess, pretty thankful that I was on vacation. But at the same time, I wanted to be in the moment. You know, I wanted to see what it was all about. I wanted to be the one investigating something like this. Eventually, I did get a chance for that but it was a different strain. But anyways, it was definitely very hectic and yeah, fun times for the clients for sure. Head over to BTLO and let's paste that in. Let's try it out. Awesome. We just completed our memory analysis ransomware lab. Now, if you followed along, I really do hope that you learned a lot and are starting to gain some confidence in your memory analysis skills. Remember to document your work and do some more research on topics where you felt a bit lost while following along and then continue to rinse and repeat. But do promise me that you won't beat yourself up too much because hey, memory forensics is tough. That is it for the video and I do hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.